Hello, this is the second video about logical programming in the series. This, in this video, we want to explain, or I want to explain, how to use the horn scheme that I explained in the last video. I put out the horn scheme here on the top left, but before we get into the real topic, um, we need to answer one very important question. What do we actually want to do here? For me, it was pretty hard to follow all this stuff that we did in the school because I didn't really realize what we're trying to do. I didn't really realize what, what is the goal that we're heading for. And therefore I had a hard time understanding all the stuff, even though it's actually very simple. So first, we want to answer that question. We want to prove something. When you hear I want to prove something, then it's like, eh, it's mathematical stuff, it's boring. So, but we do logical reasoning and proving stuff all the time in your usual life. So example, for example, you have a friend and you say, hey friend, you had the car keys when I gave it to the, uh, when I saw you the last time, and now you don't have the car keys. Therefore, you apparently lost the car keys. Or another example would be, the street outside is wet. Therefore, it must have rained. So we do this logical reasoning all the time. Especially in this case, you have the, the end relation here. This is true and this is true. Therefore, this must be true. We're actually not trying anything else. The only difference is that we do it more formal and without holes. What do I mean with holes? You have the hole here that he must not have lost the car keys. Maybe they would have been stolen. And in logical programming, you try to not fall into these holes. And as I told you, we're trying to do it in a more formal way. So we would first ask the question, are you guilty? Remember the question, are you guilty? And how do we try to answer that question? We are using two facts. Fact number one, you had the keys. Fact number two, you don't have the keys right now. And to be honest, if we try to prove that, then we find out we cannot prove it. So we cannot tell actually that you are guilty. That's the important point here with logical programming. You try to do it more formal and therefore more secure. What you can prove here is what is really true. This is just for daily life and you're not really sure if what you're saying is really the truth. So this is what we're heading for. I hope you got a better image of what we're trying to do. We have a question. We have some statements or relations. And with the help of these statements and relations, we try to answer the question full stop. Okay, this was a very, very, I don't know how to finish this sentence. Let's just go on, right? Okay, we want to answer a very important question. And the question is, am I stupid? And to answer this question, we have two facts. We have fact number one. Oh, we have one fact. Fact number one is, I am human. You see, it's a fact. And the second thing is, we don't have a fact, we have a, a relation that says, if X is human, then X is stupid. X can be everything. X could be me. X could be you. X could be the house of the hill. But the house of the hill is not human, therefore it cannot be stupid, right? Of course, we would have need to proven that the house of the hill is really not human. Anyway, let's get started. We want to answer this question. To answer the question, we start off with the question and we combine it with Basically, we can combine it with everything, but it's the most easiest way to combine it with a relation. So we want to combine it with this relation. But not that easy, right? We want to set the x to me or to I. Why can we do that? x can be everything, as I told you. x can be you, can be me, can be the house of the hill. The point is, it can be me. So we can set it to me. So we set it to I. We can set it to I. And then... You will figure they are both connected with end and stupid is on the right side of this arrow on this side and stupid is on the left side of the arrow on this side. Therefore, stupid will cancel each other out and we are left with human. We are left with the question, am I human? That was the short form for, of explanation when you have something on the right and something on the left of the arrow and these are combining things then or combined things then they cancel each other out and everything else is left in this case an empty clause on the left side and human on the right side is what we get but to get more into detail because um 
just as an explanation video. If you don't understand the logic behind this, I will bring it in a little bit better form for you. I abbreviated that a little bit. We have the stupid and the empty clause and we have human and stupid. A better form means in this case a form that you may be more used to. I hope you understand that you can write this part in a little bit different way and it is this way. Not stupid or empty. But as empty is empty, it's basically not stupid that is left. And, and of course you can write this in the same way. Oh, by the way, did I write end or say end? This should be or empty. Anyway, so not human or stupid. It's the same rule we apply on both sides. But actually we don't want to apply the rule on this side. And maybe you've already seen what we are heading to. I hope you see that this pattern is actually the pattern that we use for modus tollens. I'm not sure about the pronunciation here. Which means that imagine this fact is true. That means that this thing must be false. But we know that this thing here is true. And in order to, remain, to keep this thing being true while s is false, h must be false. And h must be false, not b. I hope you understood the logic. If not now, then just look up modus, modus tollens. And I hope you all will understand it. Or you just, I wanted to say you should draw the truth table, but you maybe not understand it if you just look at the truth table. Maybe you should watch some videos about it. Going back to the main problem, this is what happened with stupid and stupid and human. This is the reason why we're left here. And now we want to combine this one with a left out fact. And we apply the same logic again. Human is on the right side, human is on the left side. We can apply this modus tollens rule and we are finished off with the empty clause. And if you already studied that stuff, you know, yeah, we're finished, we're done, we proved that, we have proven that I am actually stupid. Why? Because we have the empty clause. This is how you end up when you know all that stuff. If you're new to that stuff though, um, you have no idea why the empty clause is the good thing. And in the next video, I'm going to explain why the empty clause actually tells us that we have proven that I'm stupid. Thanks for watching to this video.